bill to the House. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Order. I'm calling. Mr. Order. Speaker. I'm calling the Honourable Phil Goff. Mr. Speaker, I've got to say those last comments, frankly, were quite shameful. Uh, I, I, I know Helen Clark well. I worked with her for 18 years. I saw the way she related to and treated her diplomatic protection staff. And I think those people in the diplomatic protection squad, whom I know personally, would be actually disgusted at the comments that somehow she belittled them or, or, or talked them down. Mr Speaker, can I pick up another comment that's been made by Mark Mitchell, and it's this, quote unquote, that the police were far better resourced and, uh, and uh, were far better off under a national government. Every time I meet with my local police or I go to the police association, they tell me exactly the opposite. They say, look, our members vote right across the, the sphere, but you won't find a member that won't recognise the fact that it was a Labour government that increased our police force by over a thousand in conjunction with the New Zealand First Party, increased our police force numbers by over a thousand, more than a thousand extra frontline staff. And Mr Mitchell, what is the record of this national government? They've increased the number of sworn staff over five years by 52. 52 against the 1,000 additional police staff that the Labour-led government working with New Zealand First introduced. And then Mr Mitchell mentioned, well, we're worried about the strike force and that they'd take the patrol vessels off the, uh, off the, uh, off the police force. I want to say to Mark Mitchell that it was under his government that the patrol cars were cut back. That's on record. That's a fact. And that is his government's proud track record. And don't come at me about the Defence Force, because we know that the national government has cut the Defence Force by 1,200 since 2009. 1,200, 12%, and the highest attrition rates in the history of this country. Even in the police force, we are seeing attrition rates that are double where they were three years ago. And that does not indicate to me, Mark Mitchell, that the police are really happy with what this government is doing. In fact, if the member listens to what Greg O'Connor said this morning, he said one thing that's really worrying us is that they have slashed the non-sworn staff down by 234. And what is the product of that? The product of that is that the officer, man or woman, that should be out on the front line are having to do the jobs that once upon a time were done by the non-sworn staff. That's not my comment as a politician. That is the comment of Inspector Greg O'Connor, who has been once again re-elected President of the Police Association. So I, I just want to clean up those particular remarks. Mr Speaker, for the public listening to this debate and hearing that this Parliament is now in urgency and passing a piece of legislation through all of its stages, all of its stages, that will have retrospective effect, they will be saying, oh no, not again. When is this government going to get things right? They remember the Crown Minerals Amendment Bill earlier this year, where exactly the same thing happened. Sadly, sadly, we had the same thing happen with the, the Police Act earlier on. And to paraphrase the words of Oscar Wilde, one mistake might be unfortunate, but a second mistake is careless. And I want to ask the Minister whether her predecessor was careless in not exercising oversight over whether the, uh, this legislation was properly implemented or where the nature of the fault lies. Because in having to pass this legislation, we are letting people down. First of all, Mark Mitchell, we're letting down the police. Because how do you think it feels to be a frontline police officer who came back into the force after leaving to find that for three years you have been operating unlawfully because of a botch-up in the administration of the Police Act. How do those police officers feel? You know how they feel. They feel terrible that they've been out there in good faith doing their job only to find that when they were sworn as a, in as a police officer in a ceremony that made them incredibly proud, it had been botched. They weren't lawfully sworn officers and that is a disgrace. And I have to say, 
that normally I would not be in this House advocating that we support a piece of legislation that is retrospective and going through under urgency. But I have to say, as a member of a party in opposition, the Labor Party, that has always been responsible in regard to this sort of legislation, that we will pass this legislation because I don't want to see victims who see the people that offended against them, sometimes grievously, getting off the hook, not being accountable for their crimes because of a botch up in the administration of the Police Act under this government. That's why we're passing this legislation. We're passing it to protect the victims and to give respect back to those 63 unfortunate officers who have been working hard in good faith only to find that the rug was pulled out from under them because the government didn't get it right. Because the government didn't get it right. And what I'm really worried about, Mr Speaker, is that this botch up is symptomatic of a malaise that is now affecting the police force. Uh, look, I don't, care, I don't care what the members of the government might claim. When you have the number of sworn staff cut by 234, making it harder for the frontline staff to do their job, when the numbers of frontline staff aren't even keeping up with the increase in population, the ratios of police to population have gone down, Anne Tolly. They've gone down under your administration. At the select committee, you were finally forced to own up that the police budget has been cut in real terms over the last two years. You were forced to admit that. The minister was forced to admit because the facts were there and her own officials said, you're wrong, minister. The, the, this government is not increasing the funding in real terms for the police force. They're cutting it. That is on record. That is on the transcript. That is on the transcript of the select committee, Anne Tolly, and the minister cannot deny that. This government, Mark Mitchell, you were there, has cut the funding for the police force. They have not kept up the increase in police numbers with the increase in population, and they've slashed the non-sworn staff to put more responsibilities, more work on the shoulders of the police officers. And on top of that, they have done what every one of those members promised they wouldn't do that fought in the 2008 campaign. They have closed police stations. You know what they said at the select committee? We haven't closed police stations. We have closed kiosks. You know what a kiosk is? It's something that's three-sided with one side open to the public. It's not a police station. I've got the photos and offered to table them in this House of police stations that have been closed across Auckland by this government that said they would never do that. My police station in Roskill South closed to the public with a notice that is now yellow with age that says temporarily closed. Temporarily closed for eight months. Eight months in breach of the undertaking the Minister and the Police Commissioner gave me at the Select Committee. And Mr Speaker, it is an absolute disgrace that the police should be put in those circumstances to face these sort of botch-ups, not to have adequate levels of staffing and to have the police stations closed and to have the non-sworn staff that are there to support them being slashed. That is a poor record, Minister. The reason that crime came down in this country was because of the reforms, the increase in staffing for the police, the reforms of the law and the reforms of the correction system that happened under a Labor government. And I'm proud of that. And I'm glad to see the police, uh, the, the police doing their job well because we increased their numbers by a thousand. But this police force is getting no support from a government that allows botch-ups like this to happen and allows their resources to be cut back. The money they're funded with, their numbers, the, the, you know, Counties Manukau, Counties Manukau, an area that I know well and other members of this House, what was the cut in the, in the, the police personnel numbers there in the, uh, under this national government? 104. 104 police personnel cut from Counties Manukau, an area that's had traditionally one of the highest crime rates. You know, they won't cut Remuera and Parnell, but they will cut South Auckland County's Manukau because they don't care about the victims of the crime if those victims of crime happen to be people from low-income communities. Mr Speaker, regrettably, we need this legislation. We need to put right the botch-up that has happened. We need to protect the police officers. We need to protect the victims of crime. That is why we are supporting this legislation, but it brings no credit on this tawdry national government.
I call David Clendon.